Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So uh, I want to look at this part here, and uh, the focus of this video has to do with machining um, the radiuses. Okay, so one of the one of the options that we have is um, the equidistant offset. That's the strategy that I want to use here, and uh, if I load in this strategy couple of things I can do so I can pick equidistant and I can set to a ball mill um, I can set my step over I'm just gonna drop the tolerance down and uh, one of the options that you can choose is called 3d extents so we'll go ahead and compute that and what that will do is uh, roll over the edge of the part so basically allow us to uh, machine the top surfaces and to machine the uh, radius so that's a it's a good option but there there's sometimes scenarios where you just want to machine the radius uh, and this is a, a sample file that kind of allows us to see some radiuses um, there may be like some some boring or uh, you know like in this example here here let me blank my stock out you can see how the toolpath goes down into that cavity. So, if you wanted a, a catch-all to machine all these surfaces, um, the top surface and the cavity here, uh, following the the radius all the way around, this that's a good option for it. But if you wanted to just isolate the radius, how do you do that? So, uh, we don't have a specific strategy for that. So, you need to be a little creative. Um, some systems have uh, check surfaces, so we could select surf certain surfaces and say keep the tool away from that. But um, uh, that's also not an option that we have for this. Now, real quick, I'm just going to create a new layer, and uh, I'm just going to draw two boundaries. Well, I'll draw one boundary first. So one of the options that you have is to choose a boundary. So we can choose a boundary, and then now the toolpath will be contained uh, inside of that boundary, you, uh, uh, what do we got here? Okay, so now we can see the toolpath is contained inside of that boundary. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can have a boundary inside of a boundary. So, uh, basically an outside and an inside. So, I'm just going to uh, sketch a circle here, and then I'll sketch a circle here. So, now we're going to use... Uh, those two circles as our boundary, this one and this one. So what that will do is it will generate toolpath between uh, the outside and the inside boundaries. Okay. Now, one of the one of the other options that you have. So now you can see it's cutting inside the two boundaries. One of the other options that you have, um, if you come into parameters you have a bottom of job and you could say minus one inch and uh, we'll recompute that and so we have our two boundaries and then we're gonna tell it not to cut any deeper than uh, minus one inch from the top apart so now you can see it's limited between those two boundaries and uh, it's only cutting um, so deep alright so the next thing that we want to look at is you know we want to restrict uh, let me, let me edit the, this uh, value here. We want to restrict how deep um, the toolpath goes, but we don't want it to be an increment of Z. We want it to be like a contour Z. If we go to, um, let me blank this toolpath out, and if we go to a front view, okay, you can see that there's an angle um, for this surface. So really, what we, what we want to do is we want to generate a surface and select that as part of the geometry uh, and that will limit how deep the toolpath goes. So um, what I'm going to do just real quick is I'll go to a front view and I'm just going to um, sketch a, a spline and uh, so then we'll extrude the spline. Right now this is just for the concept is 16 and then we need to translate that um, uh, okay so now we have um, 
and go back to a top view. And then we're going to bring this up. Uh, let's just say one inch. So now, so we have we have our boundaries that we've set up, but now what we're going to do is we're going to select this uh, surface that we generated as well. Okay, so now that's part of the, um, the geometry, and then we'll recompute. So what we, what we have is we have an outside boundary, we have an inside boundary, and then we also have a surface, and that surface we're using as a blocking surface. So now you can see how the toolpath is staying within the two boundaries, but when it hits that uh, yellow surface, then the tool the toolpath doesn't go any deeper than that. So using an outside and an inside boundary and using a blocking surface is uh, how I'm able to generate toolpath um, just for uh, just for uh, the the radius of the part. So if we go into a little more detail with this, let's go back. We'll create another layer. We're going to go to a, a front view. Uh, we're going to draw. Here, let me turn this layer off. We're going to draw on the front plane. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract some wireframes. So we'll do utilities, extract edges, single. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab. Uh, I'm going to grab all the surfaces that are just below this uh, this fillet here. Okay, so we got all that stuff. All right, now we're going to turn off. Uh, we're going to turn off the the model, and then I'm going to get rid of a lot of this geometry here. So I kind of I have this uh, this profile. All right. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to break uh, this into two pieces. And then I'm gonna get rid of this side over here. All right. So now I'm go back to a front view. I'm gonna sketch a rectangle. I'm gonna generate a surface plane. All right. Then I'm gonna change the color that I'm drawing with. Then I'm gonna do a projection. So I'm gonna take this wireframe, and then I'm gonna project it onto that surface. Then I'll go to a selection mode and I'll grab the yellow geometry and then what I'm left with is um, is a, a flat profile, uh, projected profile of uh, the cross section of the part. Okay. Now sometimes you can just draw a plane and intersect it with the model but you can see where there's no uh, plane that we can intersect with this model to get the cross section. So that's why we went through this projection method. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a spline. I'm going to change the color that I'm drawing with and then I'm going to draw a spline. And uh, so I'm kind of going to start off the part a little bit. And I'm going to get an approximation uh, of this profile. And the reason why I do a spline um, makes it easier for selection. And sometimes when you uh, flatten out the geometry, uh, it can be problematic. So, okay, so I got uh, the spline. I'm going to come back and delete the original geometry. Okay, so now I have a cross section of the part. Uh, from here, I'm going to, uh, problematic, but the other thing too is I want to offset this. So I'm going to offset this down. Um, we're going to do 0.26. Uh, we want it to go the other way. Okay, so now we have an offset for that profile. Um, we, if we bring the, the solid back up, you can see the profile that I'm having it follow, and I have it offset slightly. And then uh, from here, I'm going to extrude this curve. Okay, and then we're going to translate it. Uh, uh, 16, okay. So now what we have, I'll go back to my top plane. We have uh, a, a blocking surface here. And then uh, um, we have our blocking surface. The next thing we need to do is create our boundary uh, to limit the toolpath, our inside and outside. And we'll pick that up in the next video.